Hello there, fabulous people. Thank you so much for having me here. My name is Zamboni. I am uh, an astrologer in New York City. I want to send a big shout out to Nadia Shah. Thank you so much for having me here. She is like uh, an auntie to me in this business. I really appreciate her. She is so um, helpful and thoughtful. And I really appreciate the work that she's been doing for so long and uh, in paving the way for lots of us. So um, I really appreciate y'all. So, um, so my, like I said, my name is Zamboni. I'm an astrologer in New York City. Um, I have a Patreon page where I talk about a lot of the kind of things that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I, you can also just find me on Instagram. Uh, Zamboni Funk is my Instagram handle, and you'll be able to see me doing um, forecasts and stuff there. But then also, a lot of what I do is um, I sort of work with um, astrology. And so I'm teaching an astrology basics course right now on my Patreon. And then also I deal with like sort of practical enchantment. And so how to make astrology work for you um, if you are trying to make things happen in your life. Um, so so let's uh, talk about that a little bit today. So today I want to talk about the moon. I want to talk about moon magic and uh, just like what, how to, how to work with the moon and some very basic electional protocol on dealing with the moon. So um, electional means uh, we're choosing something, right? We're going to select a time um, to perform our ritual or to start our thing or whatever it is, right? Um, and so we are... so. You know, a lot of magic will have uh, something explicitly to do with astrology. You're going to work with Venus or you're going to work with Saturn or something like that. Um, But sometimes there's not an explicitly astrological character to it. Sometimes you're just going to start a thing Um, or you're going to do your new moon intention or you're going to burn a candle or you're going to do a sigil or something like this. Right. And so um, even that kind of stuff that's not explicitly astrological um, I find is still it's still really helpful to pay attention to what's going on with the moon. Um, even if you don't take anything else into account, you don't look at your rising sign and you don't look at where, you know, the, the sun being trying to Saturn or like any of any of that kind of stuff. Right. Um, you just want to do some very basic stuff and see, like, is the moon going to sort of uh, support the work that I want to perform here today? And so um, the so the first question is kind of like, why the moon? Why do we care about the moon so much? And so the moon is um, the closest celestial body to the Earth, right? And so um, there's this idea of like all the other planetary and cosmic spheres that are sort of, um, you know, shining down on us and sort of uh, bringing us this information of uh, what is going on in the heavens, but it all sort of has to go through, the moon is kind of like the gatekeeper, right? It's the one that is closest to us, and it's the one that sort of um, actually hands out what's going on here. And so um, what's going on with the moon is critical to our actual lived everyday experience. And we can see this through things like um, the tides and uh, being associated with the moon or, um, you know, there's there's a lot of like people's bodies are associated with the moon. There's a there's a lot of emotional stuff that goes on when the moon is big. Then we feel big emotions a lot of times when the moon is smaller then um, things can maybe feel like less of a big deal. and We don't have to freak out quite as much. Um, so that is, you know, so it's, it's pretty obvious the way that the moon kind of uh, works in our lives. And so, um, you know, that's why you can use just the moon as your electional protocol and you can get a really long way with that. So how are we going to do that? What does that mean? Right? So, um, on a very basic level, then what you're going to want to look for is, so think about what you're trying to do and match that to the moon. Is the moon waxing or is the moon waning? So on the one side, the moon is going to be going from the new moon to the full moon, right? And so the moon is going to be growing in light. It's going to be getting bigger. It's going to be getting brighter, right? And so this is going to be very good for something like um, things that are things that you want to grow. Maybe you want to make some money. Maybe you want to grow your social media following. Maybe you want to, you know, like these kinds of things. Maybe you want to plant a seed, 
right? Uh, a literal seed, right? Or maybe you want to plant a seed in your life. Maybe you want to um, start a habit and do something new and you want that thing to grow and flourish in your life, right? So the moon um, wa waxing on the way up and sort of growing, that's going to support this kind of endeavor, right? On the other side, then we've got the moon waning, right? And so this is after the full moon, the full moon to the new moon, then the moon is getting smaller, right? Um, and so this is going to be important for things uh, that you want to uh, be done with. You want to get rid of stuff. You want to make things smaller. You want to do less of something, right? Uh, maybe you want to try a fast. Maybe you've heard uh, about the health benefits of fasting, and so you want to try that out, right? Or maybe you want to... Um, you know, quit smoking cigarettes, or maybe you want your uh, breakup to, to stick this time, or something like that, right? So, um, you know, the, the waning side is just as important as the, the waxing side, right? Um, you know, creation is important, and growth is important, but we can't just grow infinitely, right? We have to, there has to be a segment of degradation as well. Um, a lot of times, you know, getting rid of things will make way for the new thing to come when it's time for, for that. So, um, so match your intention to the waxing or waning part of the moon, uh, the moon cycle. So if that's all you did, right, then that would take you, that's, that's like half the battle. Um, that's a solid 50%. Just try to do waxing things when the moon is waxing. When you want stuff to grow, do it when the moon is waxing. When you want to be done with stuff, then do it when the moon is waning. When you want to do less, uh, use the, the waning moon. Um, so one thing to uh, note here is that I typically avoid the peaks. And so that is the full moon or the new moon. Um, so the new moon is completely dark, right? There's no light of the moon. You can't see the moon at all. It's conjunct the sun. Um, you know, the, it's kind of like going through this purification process with the sun. There's just like not really. So um, the light of the moon is the thing that's going to sort of like uh, give us the juice to do what we need to do. Um, and so the new moon just doesn't have very much juice to it. The, the complete dark of the moon is a time that I uh, typically will use for resting and for contemplating and reflection and this kind of thing, right? Um, it's not the sort of thing that I really want to uh, try to handle a lot of business under. Um, the full moon on the other side is uh, the peak light, right? And so it's like, oh, there's, a, there's so much juice here. Like, why don't we use this, right? Um, and sometimes that can be helpful and sometimes that can be a, uh, you know, a thing that is worth checking out, but, um, it, it can be a lot, you know, um, <clears throat> many of us live in a culture where more is considered better, right? Um, but I, I typically will avoid a full moon for, for a couple of reasons. One, it's opposite to the sun. And so there's a natural tension and conflict there, right? Um, the, there's also... Just like, you know, you can look at, um, you know, you can hang out outside when the, uh, you know, if you live in a city or something like that, and you can hang out outside and, and just watch, do people watching while the uh, full moon is happening. And people are getting kind of crazy. People are getting kind of wild out here, right? Um, and, you know, this is really something to, you know, um, it can be a lot to try to harness when the, when the moon is really full. And so um, I like to, you know, if I'm if I really want something to be super like charged up and like go, then I'll use the um, the waxing moon when it's like one sign before the opposition to the sun. Um, so that's still a lot of moon. There's still a lot to to work with there, but it's maybe not quite so much and maybe not quite as unruly as the full moon. Um, so you know, feel free to experiment. Check it out. Um, you know, see, see how it works for you. But this is the, the protocol, the electional protocol that I use. So, um, so getting a little more, um, you know, complex and advanced with our moon stuff here. So what we can start to do is we can start to look for a happy moon, a moon that's, that is, um, you know, 
excited to bring about the things that we want, whatever, whatever those things are, right? So a moon that's in good condition, a moon that feels good and um, is in a good mood is more likely to give you what you want than a moon that's sort of like grumpy and tired of your uh, nonsense, right? And so, um, so there are some nice ways of finding a nice happy moon, right? So first is uh, put the moon in a sign that it likes, right? So you can do your ritual in, uh, you know, either Cancer, when the moon is in Cancer, the moon rules Cancer and is very comfortable and at home there, or when the moon is in Taurus, right? And so um, the moon is exalted in Taurus. The moon and Venus really get along well. And so uh, Venus rules Taurus. And so there's like, there's a sense of like, ah, this makes a lot of sense. Also, Taurus is very grounded and stable a lot of times. And um, if the moon is anything, if the moon has a problem, it is that it changes too much. It changes too quickly. It, like, you know, it's always going through the signs super quickly. It's always growing. It's always shrinking. There's all this like instability there, right? And, the, and Taurus is very good for sort of grounding that and um, generating some stability. And so the moon really likes being in Taurus. And so if you can use the moon in Cancer or the moon in Taurus, then... Um, um, that is going to automatically sort of give you a thumbs up here. Um, the op- the opposite side of that is look out for signs that are uh, that the moon doesn't really like very much, right? And so these are conveniently opposite to Cancer and Taurus, right? So Cancer is uh, is opposite to Capricorn. So watch out for the moon in Capricorn. The moon does not like Capricorn very much. Um, you know, and this does not mean if you have a moon in Capricorn, there's nothing wrong with you as a person. Um, electional proto- uh, the electional protocol is different than natal chart readings, right? So this is, this is an important distinction to make here, right? So if you've got the moon in Capricorn, um, then that's fine. And that's probably helpful for many things in your life. However, um, if you are going to elect a time to do something that you you want to like come to fruition, then maybe the moon in Capricorn is not your move in that moment. Um, the other one opposite to Taurus is Scorpio. Um, the moon is so Scorpio is very um, it's very intense. It's very emotional. Um, and so the moon is ready to be very intense and emotional in uh, Scorpio. And so that can sort of be like a little too much sometimes. Um, Again, we're talking about an electional protocol. We're not talking about uh, natal chart readings. So, um, So you may want to avoid the moon in Capricorn or the moon in Scorpio for your elections. Um, So then getting a little a little more complex still. So we're, we're up to like 75% of the electional protocol at this point. If that's all you do, you look for a waxing moon in cancer for, um, for your, uh, you know, your, your home thing that you want, you want your home to grow and flourish and stuff. Then, uh, and you use the moon in cancer while it's waxing, then like, that's enough. That's really, that's all you really need. Right. Um, but so we can, we can look for some other things also. So, um, I, if you're into aspects, then you can look at, um, you want to avoid hard aspects with malefics, especially hard aspects and especially malefics. So just watch out for malefics in general. You don't want to have malefics up in your piece. So when I say malefics, I'm talking about Mars and Saturn primarily, although we can throw Pluto in there perhaps as well. Um, and, um, so these are the planets that bring challenges, they bring difficulties, they bring, um, you know, they, they bring stuff that you don't like as much. So they, the word malefic means, uh, a bad doer, right? And so, um, you know, this is not to say that Saturn and Mars are all bad. Um, they can often bring challenges that make you tough, that make you strong, that, um, you know, they're, They bring experiences that you kind of have to go through and then uh, it makes you a better person a lot of the time. However, if what you're doing is you're you're burning a candle because you want to make some more money or something like that, then um, doing that while the moon is conjunct Saturn is going to super slow that down and it's going to cause a problem. It's going to um, cause challenges and difficulties in what you're asking to come to fruition. So watch out for that. Um, you don't want conjunctions, oppositions, or squares to either Mars or Saturn. Um, that's going to, um, you know, it's going to cause more trouble than it's worth 
most times. So um, just like be aware of that and try not to do that, especially the conjunctions. Um, really watch out for the conjunctions. One other thing that you should watch out for, especially with conjunctions, is the nodes. So um, the nodes are, there's, there's two of them. There's a north and a south node. They're always opposite to each other. And um, the north node and the south node are the places where eclipses happen. So um, real quick, eclipses are um, a time when the sun, the moon, and the earth all line up uh, just so, and it casts a shadow over either the sun or the moon, right? And so the sun and the moon, they are are our luminaries, right? So they are the ones that shine light out into the world. Um, and so this idea of casting a shadow is directly antithetical to the way that uh, the moon likes to operate, right? And so even if it's not eclipse time, even if it's just um, the, the moon um, within about five degrees of the node, um, either, either one of the nodes, um, then you... Are, then that's gonna that's gonna cause a level of uncertainty and like a little bit of like oh I don't really know there's like a shadowy component to it so um, you know for for most of what we're gonna be trying to do with the uh, new moon intentions or something like that then um, you know that is that's not gonna be super helpful so just be aware of that and um, you know err on the side of staying away from the notes. So you want to stay away from the nodes. You want to stay away from hard aspects, especially to um, our malefics, right? So the converse to that is we like aspects to benefics. Um, we especially like soft aspects to benefics. So if we can get a trine or a sextile to the do-gooders, right? Benefic means a good doer, right? And so those are Venus and Jupiter. Um, if it's If you're going to be um doing stuff with the sun you can get you can usually like a soft aspect to the sun is is cute as far as the moon is concerned we like that one um so uh venus jupiter sun if you can get um a nice soft aspect so that's going to be a sextile or a trine so that's going to be um either the moon in um so the the moon in a sign of complementary element so you know fire signs and Air signs go to get, go well together. Water signs and earth signs go well together. Um, so if you can get that kind of situation going on, um, then that is going to be helpful to you. So a lot of times, um, Venus and Jupiter especially are going to be really good about growing things. They're going to be about good with harmony and bringing pleasure and joy and this like bodily sense of like, mm, it feels good, right? And so um, this is the kind of thing that you can sort of see going on um, with... Um, nice soft aspects to um, to benefics. You can also I'll I'll take a conjunction to benefics. We love a nice Moon Venus conjunction, for example. Um, I you know squares and oppositions are you know there's there's some hemming and hawing that needs to go on at that point. We'd be like hmm, I don't know if this is gonna you know really think about um, the rest of your election and see about like, is this going to support what I'm trying to do? You know, if you've got, if it's waxing the way that you need it to be, and you've got the moon in a nice sign and stuff like that, then like, maybe, maybe this is going to work, especially since, um, a lot of what I'm talking about here, we're talking about doing like burning a candle or something like that. It's not something that is, um, super high intensity. Right. Um, and so you can probably get away with hard aspects to malefics or to, uh, benefics. You don't want hard aspects to malefics. So um, that is our basic moon electional protocol. Um, if you want to use the moon as um, you know a timing mechanism to to show you when is a good time to start your uh, process or your thing, then this is a good, a nice good starter kit for uh, electional protocol. There there are elections that are much more involved in this. You're going to be looking at planetary hours. You're going to be looking at the rising sign. You're going to be looking at the angles, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, I definitely do recommend looking into that kind of thing, um, especially the more high powered your uh, magic is. The If you're going to be trying to do something uh, very big and important and you want it to last a long time and all that stuff, you want to make a talisman or something like this, then uh, definitely look into the more intense and rigorous uh, electional protocol. But for 
kind of run of the mill new moon intentions, you want to burn a candle, you want to do a sigil, something like that, then this is going to take you a good long way and you'll you'll be able to do some some good work with this. So like I said before, um, I have a Patreon page where I talk about stuff like this a lot. I talk about practical enchantment. I am working through a, an astrology basics course right now. Um, so you can see a bunch of uh, videos around uh, what astrology is and how to use it in your everyday life. I also um, look at, so if you're like watching um, YouTube forecasts or you are reading your horoscope or something like that, and you're not an astrologer, but you're you know, sort of an enthusiast, um, maybe you're not even, even a magician, right? You're just like somebody who likes astrology. And um, so in these cases, um, I write or I, um, you know, my goal is to speak to those people and to help you understand what's going on in your horoscope or what's going on in that forecast and how that applies to you directly. So you can get a good concept of what's going on in the astrology and it's not necessarily going to be so rigorous as to make you into an astrologer who's going to be reading charts or anything like that, although we will work toward that. For, for the people who are interested in that. But if you just want to read horoscopes and you're like, but where am I going to see this in my life? What does this mean for me? Then um, I do that kind of work also. I, um, so that's all available on my Patreon. You can find me um, on Patreon if you uh, search for Zamboni Funk. That is also my Instagram handle. Um, what I do is I ride the beat, you know, just like that funk music. I ride the beat um, and work with elections and work with trying to like, uh, you know, do the right thing at the right time. So thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you so much again to Nadia Shah for uh, having me today. And I look forward to seeing y'all inside. See you later.